Hi, my name is Monica Ponder. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Food Science and Technology at Virginia Tech. Uh, we're t here today to discuss research that was funded by ILSI North America to examine the suitability of Enterococcus fascium as a surrogate for inactivation of Salmonella enterica inoculated onto whole peppercorns and cumin seeds treated with ethylene oxide. Ethylene oxide is one of the four processes that are used by the spice industry in order to reduce insect larvae and other naturally occurring microbiota from the surface of spices. Um, it has been shown in the past to be effective at killing a salmonella, it, achieving anywhere between a 1 in 4 log coniforming units per gram reduction of salmonella within a lab scale type of apparatus. We were interested in validating uh, the suitability of Enterococcus fascium to be used within commercial processes, which are much more sophisticated compared to a lab scale apparatus. Uh, ethylene oxide is considered to be a pesticide by the United States EPA and is therefore regulated. That means there are very strict instructions that must be followed by processors um, and a strict set of instructions that they can't deviate from as part of that process. And despite the fact that they have these strict set of instructions, all of the spice processors have a slight amount of variability to their process. And their process varies depending on the type of spice or the product they're using, or also the packaging for the product there. So even though it would be really nice if we can give one magic set of conditions that would work for all spices and for all packages, that's just not realistic compared to what our marketplace uses. So we set about bringing the industry a tool. And that tool is a non-pathogenic microorganism that can be placed within or on the surface of a spice product and can then be processed using the standard commercial methods. We're validating or verifying that that organism behaves the same way that salmonella does when inoculated onto the surface of a whole peppercorn in a cumin seed and then subjected to ethylene oxide processing. We prepared these spices by first growing Enterococcus fascium in RRL B2354, which has been used for other process validation surrogate types of studies. And also, alternatively, our cultivar of salmonella. Now, it's important that we chose salmonella that had been isolated from low water activity foods or also spices in the past because those strains are likely to be adapted to survive under those types of conditions and desiccation that you would see with, with spices. We did an inoculation by having a small amount of liquid placed on the surface and then we dried the spices back to a water activity of 0.04. They were then placed in a muslin sachet. That muslin sachet was placed within a larger polywoven bag that was then filled um, with five pounds of non-inoculated spices. Those spices were then processed using typical commercial procedures for whole black peppercorn and cumin seeds by two different ethylene oxide processors. And that was important because those two different ethylene oxide processors used different procedures. They had different temperatures that they processed at. Um, they had the standard amount of time, which for ethylene oxide, the amount of dwell where the contact time of the spice and that gas cannot exceed six hours. That was uniform with both companies, but the temperature during the dwell was very different, and the maximum time that the spice achieved that temperature was likely different between the two processes. 
We then, after the spices were processed, we enumerated the salmonella and the enterococcus from the spices. Uh, as part of these studies, we discovered that it was essential to use an overlay methodology in order to get better recovery of salmonella and enterococcus facium from the whole peppercorns and cumin seeds because, especially with ethylene oxide fumigation, they become damaged and it becomes it's difficult for them to grow on there. And for the enterococcus facium, uh, especially, it required 48 hours before we could enumerate all of the colonies after that period of time. That's a little different than a standard assay where people look at only 24 hours. When we examined our data, we found that there were differences in the amount of reduction of salmonella and enterococcus facium um, between the two different ethylene oxide procedures. One company, Company A, there was a range in inactivation of salmonella and enterococcus facium both between two to eight log colony forming units per gram reduction. Company B showed eight to nine log reductions of both salmonella and enterococcus facium. So what I'd like you to take home from that is it's really important to know the spread of your data. If I gave you just the average of that, company A has an average five log reduction, but you wouldn't know that there were some of the bags of spices that achieved only a two log reduction. Luckily, for both of these corporations that were performing that work, the enterococcus and the salmonella behaved the same way on the surface of those spices. And there was no statistical difference in the inactivation of those two organisms on the spices. So we could conclude that under the two test conditions of ethylene oxide processing that we used for both whole peppercorns and cumin seeds that enterococcus facium could be considered as a surrogate for salmonella under those situations. I think this is a very valuable uh, tool for manufacturers because it's going to give them the ability to start looking at their packaging configurations to help to identify what exactly is happening within the package and are they able to achieve the reductions in a burlap sack compared to a large cardboard box compared to a very large um, plastic type of container where the permeabilities into those types of packaging can be very different. And so having this surrogate organism is going to be very useful because they, these organisms are going, potentially are going to be influenced by not only the gas that is coming into contact with them, but also the heat or the steam that is delivered as part of an ethylene oxide fumigation process.